Hello, I'm Dr. Fraser, and in this video I'm going to show how to use a p-thread and pass data to it and from it using dynamically allocated memory. So we're doing this all in C, so we're going to use malloc. As a starting point, I'm using the code that we ended with in the first video on creating a single p-thread. And we're passing, in this example, we pass the value in as a pointer to a variable from my main. So that came in here as my argument pointer. And then I returned the value not as using this pthread exit, but instead using this global variable sum. So I created a global variable sum, wrote the answer into it, and at the end I could access that. So anytime you're using a global variable, you might be thinking that's not the best way to go. And indeed, as we pass around pointers, when we start to use dynamically allocated memory, it can sometimes be cleaner. So let's start cleaning that up. So the first thing is let's work on passing in dynamically allocated memory into the function. So here, I am accepting a pointer. It's a pointer to a void, and it basically can be anything. Now, we're going to make it to be a pointer to a long long, which is the numbers we want to count up and to. So the code I have here would work as before, but I can actually kind of shorten it down a little bit. Well, actually, no, that'll be fine. I've got a, I cast my pointer, so I cast it from a long long, pardon me, from a void star into a long long star, and then I grab the value and put it in limit here. Now, if this was dynamically allocated previously, I'm going to free it here now that I'm done with it. So I'm going to free, I can free arg, I could also free limit ptr because of the same thing. So I could free this one or this one. So I'm going to use it and then clear it. And now that I'm here, we might as well also allocate some space for the answer. So I've got this variable sum. Let's move it inside, make it a local variable, which is always a good idea. And now I want to pass back the answer. Now I could have dynamically allocated to start with, I'm just going to keep it very distinct, very separate. So I'm going to say there's a long, long, let's call it answer, and it's going to be a pointer, equals, well, I want this to be dynamically allocated. So I have to malloc. Now the easy way to do malloc is to say I want this to be the size of star answer. So I'm going to dereference answer. Now you might be thinking this isn't going to be safe because I am dereferencing something that hasn't yet been created. Maybe it's null. What happens when you dereference a null pointer? Bad things do. But size of doesn't actually run at runtime dereferencing my pointer. What this says is I'm going to give you the number of bytes that this would have been. It can then figure that out from the compile time information. So this doesn't cause any errors. This is actually a nice flexible way because if later I decide that well answer should actually be a, a double, for example. If I changed it to double here, this size of would automatically recompute for me. Let's get rid of the wrong comment. I guess I hear uh, pass back data in dynamically allocated memory. So now I've dynamically allocated the memory. I need to actually set the value in here so I can say star yeah, star answer. So dereference answer equals sum. So I copy the value in. And then I can use pthread exit to pass the value back. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So let's do man on pthread exit. It tells us it's in the pthread.h file, which we already have included, which is good. And we pass it a pointer. So the fun when the function terminates, and calling thread uh, returns a value via the retval. And here retval is a void star. So we pass it in a void star. Basically, anything pointer we pass it will automatically convert to a void star. So I'm going to pass it in answer. So we are now giving out a pointer to this memory that we have allocated. So it's not likely going to be a, a memory leak as long as somebody else calls free on it. OK, so I think that's all the details we want to change here on the sum runner at the moment. Let's go down and have a look at the actual implementation of our function, or our calling of it. So in here, we're currently passing in a pointer to a local variable. Let's change that to be a pointer to some dynamically allocated memory. So long, long, let's call this one, uh, well, yeah, let's stick with limit, but let's comment this out so we don't have a conflict. Star limit, so pointer to the limit equals, well, we want to call a new space, so we call malloc. And this is going to be the size of star limit. 
So follow the pointer, just as we did mention previously. OK, so now I've got my space allocated. I can say star limit equals, and I'll just take this code from before, and extract using ASCII to long long of the first param or the second parameter, which will be the actual number passed in. So now that I have my allocated space, I can pass this into pthread create. I no longer need to pass the address of this because it is already a pointer. So I can now just convert it. Incidentally, pthread create would be quite happy to accept the address of that. We'd then be casting it up here. I would just have some errors because I'd be passing in a pointer to a pointer and then casting it back to a pointer and treating the number as something else. So these casts can become a problem. You want to be very careful that you've got all the t data types uh, casting correctly. OK, so let's double check what we've got. We create a new thread of the sum runner, and we pass in a pointer here. And this is a pointer to some new space, which is good. So we've allocated it here. It goes in. Now when it comes out, how does the actual value come out? Well, if I look at pthread join, We can see here that it's going to, well, we pass in the pthread underscore t, so this is the thread ID. So we're passing in the thread ID, which is good. And then I was passing in a null, but instead I can pass in a pointer to a pointer, a void star star. And in fact, I don't want it to be a void star star, I want it to be a pointer to a pointer of the appropriate data type. I know it's going to be a, a long, long. So let's go long, long. I'm going to make this a pointer, and I'm going to say this is the result. So I'm going to have a pointer to the result. I need to be able to hold a new value in that pointer, and so I'm going to pass in the address of result. So this says, give me the address of a pointer. And when you get the address of a pointer, you have created a pointer to a pointer. So I'm passing in a long, long star, star instead of my void star star. So here I've got the, uh, the value is now going to be passed back. What am I passing back? I'm passing back a pointer. So up here I passed back a pointer to a long long. So that now gets stored here in result. And so inside of result, I can check that value. So I can print star result. Print it to the screen. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to free the memory. So free on uh, result. Because I malloced it, I need to free it. So let's build that, see what happens. What's well, not happy yet? Uh, so incompatible pointer type. So passing argument to incompatible pointer type. Let's just make sure we've got this. So we've got a void star star we're expecting to pass in. I have a pointer here, and I'm passing in the address of that pointer. OK, so it's not happy to do a conversion to void star star. So I could do this in a couple of steps. I could, for example, um, convert this right here and do a void star star cast. Let's try that. OK, compiled, it's happy. It always makes me nervous casting something to or from void star star, so be careful with that. And here I can do some, and let's do something simple. We know, for example, 3 is going to be 6. It worked, great. 621. OK, so it's looking like it's working OK. I can pass in a big a number here, and it's going to do the usual lengthy computation to come up with the answers for me. So that's looking pretty good. Now you can ask, how could I test this? Well, I could set up this whole thing in a loop and run it a bunch of times and check how much memory is being used on using the uh, command top. So I could see how much is being executed that way. Um, I could also run this through a number of different utilities that will check for memory leaks. It's beyond the scope of this video, uh, but a tool such as Valgrind or a number of other ones will do very extensive memory checking to make sure that all allocated memory is correctly freed. So what have we seen in this video? We saw a game that we can call a thread function, but in this case we passed in some dynamically allocated memory. This was a pointer to some dynamically allocated memory, which we then used. And once we'd extracted the value and stored it as a local variable, I called free on this. I then did my usual processing inside of my thread. And then when I was done, I allocated some new space for the answer and passed that back. So return the pointer using pthread exit. Down here, when we wanted to call it, 
we called malloc, so we allocated some space for the argument going in and set up that value. I then pass it in here as the final argument to pthread create. And then when I call pthread join, this is how I actually get the value that was passed in to pthread exit. So I pass in the second parameter here is a pointer to a pointer to my value. So here it's a void star star casted to, so it actually accepts that the compiler is happy. And I pass in the address of my pointer in order to get the pointer to the pointer. I can then print it out, and then finally I can free that, free the pointer, and that will free the memory that was allocated. All right, thank you very much.